Hi everyone. <laughs> We're just waiting now. It's time to maybe grab some water or a cup of coffee or some tea while we wait for our special guest to join us. So we're still waiting for our guest. I hope everyone's getting comfortable. You know here in Keto, it's about lunchtime, so maybe get something to eat, like a snack. Just waiting a few more minutes for also more people to join. So we have time for people to get the notification and come here. So Lori is here and I'm adding her so we can start this presentation. Hi Kelsey, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. How, how, how are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> you know, enjoying the pretty weather. Very today. excited. Yes, me too. <laughs> All right, so I think we have some people here. So if we want to get started, are you ready? Yeah, sure. I'm very excited. Great. So, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Galapagos Travel Center series on getting to know Galapagos. My name is Kelsey, and I will be your host for this live event. Here with me, I have one of our very own Galapagos experts to t help me tell you about the islands. Um, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Kelsey, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Lorena Lulema and um, I am one of the trip advisors and experts that work for Galapagos Travel Center. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my life, I've been working for this great company for 11 years and uh, what I really love about my job is that I love to help people make their dreams come true because that, that's what Galapagos is, it's a, it's a real dream. Uh, I have a family with two small kids. And um, I hope in the future I can take them to the Enchanted Islands so they can see the magnificent wildlife that the islands can offer and also they can be in contact with the wildlife they have there. But the most important thing is that they can appreciate the importance that the Galapagos means for the humanity and how to uh, learn how to take care of the environment. So and that's what I can tell about a little bit about my life. Oh, thank you, Lori. I'm sure your kids will be super, super excited to go to Galapagos when when you take them. So, yes, um, I'm sure that too. Yeah. <laughs> so, a little bit about this series. It's for you guys to learn more about the islands. Over the next four weeks, we will have live events at this time covering topics like plants, animals, how the islands were created, the different regions of Galapagos, and even some history and legends about the islands that you don't get to hear about too often. We are really, really excited about this series, and we hope you get to learn a lot about the Galapagos over the next month. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them below, and we'll answer them at the end of the event so, to just stay a little bit organized. So let's get started. So first, the Galapagos Islands are one of the most interesting areas in the world and such a sought-after de destination. Lori, can you tell us a little more about the islands, where they are, and why they are so famous? Sure. Um, well, the Galapagos Islands are a group of 13 major islands located in the Pacific Ocean. 
uh, along the equator expand. Uh, the Galapagos are part of Ecuador, and it's a national park because 97% of the islands are protected. Also, it's the, uh, the first natural world um, heritage site declared by the UNESCO, and it's a marine reserve. So mm -hmm. um, it's important that people know that Galapagos is not a massive tourism destination, mostly because it's a national park and the tourist transit is highly regulated. So, um, why it's so famous? Um, maybe because, yes, as everybody knows, Charles Darwin has written about them, or maybe because of the giant tortoises uh, makes them pretty famous. But I think that the most important thing is because of, of the bio system that has barely changed since ever. In fact, each island has its own unique bio system, and you can see on an island uh, some species, but you cannot see the same in another. So that makes this, um, the, the Galapagos so special. Wow, that's great. So obviously there's a lot of things that make the Galapagos really special. And so I think that is why it's such a great destination to visit. All right, so let's start with some very, very basic information. What is the weather like in the Galapagos Islands? Well, uh, as they are located in the equator, uh, the weather is generally good all year round, with temperatures mm -hmm. that goes around 69 to 84 Fahrenheit, which is 21 to 30 Celsius. Um, so overall, I can tell that the weather is pretty good all year round. Okay. So that's really helpful for people who want to travel there. Um, since the Galapagos Islands are islands, would you say that the weather is more tropical like it is in maybe Hawaii or the Bahamas that people might think of? No, because even though the Galapagos are on the equator, the weather is not that tropical mm -hmm. because it, it rains less. So it's a little bit drier than places like the Bahamas or Hawaii. So I cannot tell that. I cannot say that it's uh, the weather is not tropical. Yeah. So that's definitely something people should keep in mind, I think. Yes. Yeah. So when planning a trip, when is the best time to go to Galapagos? Can you tell us some important things that travelers should keep in mind when planning their trip? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, as I said, the Galapagos Islands are located right in the equator. It, it means that there is a little change in the weather year round. There is not a, really a high and low season for traveling. Uh, basically, you can go whenever it fits with your schedule. Uh, there's 12 hours of sunlight every day, so you don't have to worry about when the days are shorter, like other places in the world. Basically, there are two seasons in Galapagos, the wet season and the, and the dry season. The wet season is the period of time that goes from December to May. And um, surprisingly, during this season, you see a lot of sun. And the temperatures goes around 26 Celsius. And despite it is the wet season, the rain leaves as quickly as it arrives with the brief moments of heavy rain. What I can, well, also, the, uh, the, the water temperatures during this season it's warmer, so it makes perfect for snor um, snorkeling and swimming, and you don't need too much the use of wetsuits, for example. Also, during this season, uh, the tourists will be able to watch a lot of wildlife, such as sea turtles, marine iguanas, um, flamingos, red-footed boobies, blue-footed boobies. So as the water is warmer, as I said, snorkeling is highly recommended during these months. Also, we have the other seasons, on the other hand, which is um, the dry season. It goes from July to December, and it's a little bit cooler than uh, the, the other season. You have more clouds there. The sun mm -hmm. is less intense, and the average temperature goes around 22 Celsius. Um, it, it is also known as the Garua season, and even though it is called the dry season, uh, like a tropical climate, um, it rains lightly, especially on the highlands. Uh, the water temperatures, on the other hand, um, it's um, much cooler. The water gets colder. So it makes, makes the perfect time for divers because, as you might know, uh, while the water is cooler, you will see, you will have the chance to see more wildlife. So as you, as you might know, Galapagos, it's very famous for the marine life that it has. So divers will have the perfect time during this season. Uh, as I resume, uh, these seasons uh, mostly determine what kind of wildlife activity you will see on the islands. Uh, for example, there is more, um, there's some animals activity that you really want to see. For example, uh, whales or hammerhead sharks. 
you can choose uh, the dry season. But basically, the wildlife will be there, and any season that you choose will be perfect. It, you only have to consider which time it fits better with your schedule, and um, it will work whenever uh, you want to go. Yeah, that sounds great for travelers because there's lots of times like just make it fit with their schedule and maybe if they want to see some sort of wildlife, just plan around that. But I think other than that, it's pretty easy compared to other destinations, which is really helpful. So yes, that's right. Yeah. So now we have have figured out when we want to go. So how do you get to the Galapagos Islands from anywhere in the world? Well, uh, the most important thing that they need to know is that there are no direct international flights to the islands. You must fly first to the one or the two major cities of Ecuador, which is mm -hmm. uh, Quito and Guayaquil cities. You have to take a domestic flight from these cities. And uh, for example, from Quito, it takes about two hours and a half flying, and from Guayaquil, an hour and a half. It's pretty easy, the connections, but it's important that they must know that um, you need at least 40, uh, 48 hours in advance in order to get into Quito or Guayaquil, in order to avoid any uh, inconvenience, delay, or any situation that may occur. Um, also, the flights to the islands are only in the morning. You ha they have to know that. Um, consider that you need at least 48 hours in advance. It's also a good chance that passengers have because they can enjoy some time in Quito and Guayaquil in order to visit the surroundings that they can offer very nice sites to visit too. So they can uh, take the advantage of that uh, time in advance to visit some places around. Yeah, that's great because then you have time to maybe like have a second vacation while you're on your one vacation to Galapagos. So is there more than one airport in Galapagos? Yes, there are two main airports in Galapagos, which is one in Baltra and the other one in San Cristobal. There is another tiny island, uh, sorry, airport, uh, which is in, located in Isabela, but that one only works for domestic flights that connect Baltra and San Cristobal. Uh, so yes, that is, that is what they need to know. Two main airports in Galapagos, San Cristobal and Baltra. Got it. So I know that with Galapagos Travel Center, you can book flights for travelers. But what if I wanted to book flights on my own? Is there any additional information that I would need to know before booking? Um, yes, it's important that, um, the, um, as there are two airports, uh, Valtra and San Cristobal, the tours maybe can start from Valtra and finish in San Cristobal or on the other hand, on the other way. So it's important to book the flights accordingly because that way you, they cannot miss the, the connections or the tour based that there are two airports in Galapagos. So that's where we can come in and we can advise our passengers. We can help them also with the domestic flights or um, helping with the connections so they can book the flights accordingly and so they cannot miss any tour. Great. So now we got to Galapagos, theoretically. Um, so when planning a trip, um, what, types of their, what types of tours are there to choose from? Yes, there are four main types of tours uh, available on the islands. The first one and the most common or popular one are the cruises. Mm -hmm. uh, with the cruises, you are able to visit most remote islands and because you will sleep on board. Also, on a cruise, you will travel to more islands and visit unique sites that you cannot reach with other type of tours, for example, with the speedboats. Um, also, on these tours, you will have the great combination of water activities such as swimming and kayaking and also hiking. There is the other um, second uh, option, which is the hotel-based tour, which is um, especially designed for passengers that want a little bit more time to relax and experience more uh, the local community life. Also, they can explore the surroundings on their own because they stay in a hotel in the islands. Um, the characteristic of this tour is that you stay in a hotel and you take daily uh, tours to the islands by a speedboat, for example. These speedboats take about 16 to 20 passengers, but at the end of the day, you come back to the port, uh, to your hotel, and you spend the night there. Also, they can enjoy the evening and the nightlife. Then you have the diving tours that can be of two kinds. 
uh, the live aboard, which is the cruise that it's normally for eight days, mm -hmm. it is normally designed for uh, expert divers that want to stay eight days on board just for diving. Land tours are not available on these kind of cruises, just about one or twice, uh, once or twice. Uh, but the other diving tour will be the uh, hotel diving extension, which means that you stay in a hotel and you take daily diving tours with another speedboat. And one thing that people must consider is that Galapagos is uh, one of the best diving um, destinations in the world because of the rich wildlife you can find there. But um, it requires you to be experienced. For the live aboard, you need to be very experienced, advanced at least. And for the land-based diving, uh, you need to be at least certified because there are some sites that are more demanding. So definitely you have to be certified. And lastly, we have the island hopping tours, which are um, pretty much the same as the hotel-based tour with the main difference that passengers will stay in two or three different hotels instead of one. In, so that way they can enjoy more time on each island. They can visit more local communities and um, they can also see more wildlife or the habitat islands that are in the surroundings. And yes, so that's what I can say about the different types of tours available, but that's where we come in, the Lavagos Travel Center, is because we will help you to personalize the perfect uh, one, in one, one in a million tour. So we can make a tailor-made tour, we can make a personalized program for you, and also, uh, what's important to mention is that you can combine any of these tours. For example, you can take a short cruise of four or five days, and then you can take a hotel and extension after the cruise, so you can enjoy both, both experiences. Also, if you are a diver, but you don't want to dive every day, you can take a cruise and a, a diving extension afterwards. So as you can see, there are a million of uh, different options that you can take in the Galapagos for all kinds of interests. I love that because there's definitely something out there for every single person with all abilities and anything that anyone would need. Yeah. Yes, so, and it's important to mention also that uh, the tours, uh, sorry, because the tours are no, available but... for all kinds of tourism. For example, you can go as a solo traveler, you can go as a family, uh, for couples. So it, it will be the perfect destination for any kind of a traveler. Definitely. So I think that pretty much covers the very, very basics of the islands. And now we'll answer some questions that you guys had earlier. Or if you have any questions right now, write them below and we'll answer them. So sure. let's see, just looking for questions. We have a question from Casa Verino. Are airfares to Quito cheaper during any part of the year? Um, no, I, at the moment, or since, yes, at the moment, uh, the airfares are the same all year round. Of course, there are differences between an airline and, an, and another. You can find cheaper um, fares in certain airlines, but there is no a difference between high or low season, for example. The, the airfare is the same all year round. Okay, so that's pretty helpful also. Like, you just pick what works with your schedule, not based on what prices are. Yeah, but also uh, maybe if the, the question remains uh, if Quito airfare is cheaper, sometimes no, because uh, as it's a longer flight, normally Quito's flight is a little bit more expensive than the Guayaquil ones, but it's almost the same sometimes. Okay, that's cool. Okay, next question from the same user. Is the 48-hour stay something new? I went four years ago and flew into Quito into the islands the next morning. So I think that is referring to when we said like it's best to arrive to the islands 48 hours before. What is your opinion on that? Mm, well, it depends on each passenger. 48 mm -hmm. hours, it's our recommendation because you never know what will happen. Uh, especially if you're coming from, from Europe or from the US, you know the connections are a little bit longer. So it could happen anything, uh, maybe mm -hmm. Your, your luggage is lost or you, you lose some connection, you have some delay. So if you take 24 hours, it could be fine. But in order to avoid any inconvenience, it's better to take 48 hours. And that way, as I said, you can also take advantage of that time to visit Quito and Guayaquil. But it, it's a suggestion. 
at least for uh, 24 hours, it's the minimum, but it's a little bit risky in case of some situations that may occur. Yeah, great. So I think that covers it for the questions. Um, I just want to thank everyone so much for joining us. And I want to thank Lori, especially for all your help in giving us tons of information about the Galapagos. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface right now. So let me tell you a little bit about the topics that we have for the coming weeks. Next week, we'll be talking about flora, fauna, and formation, which you can probably guess is us going into a little bit more detail about plants, animals, and how the islands were formed millions and millions of years ago. The following week, we'll be talking about the regions of Galapagos, which will cover types of things, the types of things that you'll see depending on what areas of the islands that you choose to explore. And then three weeks from now, we will talk more about the histories, legends, and tales of the islands. So we'll be covering things like Darwin and other stories that you may not hear about too often about the Galapagos. If you have any other questions or you'd like to talk more about something, you can connect with us live and a live chat on our website at www.galapagosislands.com. You can email us at info at galapagosislands.com or you can send us a message right here on Instagram or on Facebook. Thank you so much again uh, for joining us today and thank you Lori again and we will see you next week when we talk about flora, fauna, and formation. All right. Thank you Kelsey for the invitation and see you later. Yep, bye. Bye.